Okay, um, I'm emceeing today, folks, because a uh, uh, little backstory. Uh, I started working on this property acquisition about 27 years ago, 1995 or so. And I've, uh, I went way back in time and found an article that I made some copies of that are sitting over here. But those of you who are fans of mid-century modern architecture and that located in the Coachella Valley might be familiar with the name Jack Meiselman. Uh, he built many of three or 400 homes scattered around this end of the desert that he sold for $20,000, $25,000 a piece. Now you can buy one for a little north of a million to a little south of a million. Um, but Jack and his wife Bernie uh, built this property. Uh, they donated it to the Casa Colina Hospital Foundation over in Pomona, which is a rehabilitation hospital for people who have had catastrophic injury, physical, brain, and they must have had some association that got lost in at least our history but if you look at this rock over here you'll see them mentioned i have an article that i found in an israeli newspaper <laughs> about their donation of this property to the casa kalina hospital foundation and i i want to just read a couple things Presented by the Meiselmans out of their desire to help elderly persons with low incomes, the gift consists of a large apartment complex and 40 acres in Palm Springs valued at more than $3 million. <laughs> right. Um, according to the announcement. Their th through their outstanding philanthropy, the humanitarian concerns of both Mr. and Mrs. Meiselman and Casa Kalina Foundation for the health and welfare of our older population can be uniquely and creatively answered. <laughs> um, it will be operated by the hospital as a retirement community with special appeal to those of modest income and continuing to expand on the services developed by the Meiselmans and so on. There's a copy of this article over here on the table if you'd like to read further. So, um, that's where we started. Uh, the Meiselmans had passed away. Uh, the hospital foundation was not in the apartment operations business and they came to us when we were a young organization, about three, four years old, and said, would you come have lunch with me in the desert? And they brought me here and said, uh, we would like someone to take this over. So we were called SoCal Housing, Southern California Housing Development Corporation back then. We had not expanded out of California yet. And so we worked out a deal with the city of Cathedral City, the county of Riverside, and ourselves to, on a true shoestring, acquire this, do a little bit of rehab, and then off we went. And over the years, many times, we tried in fits and starts because of reduced um, resources at the federal and state level, um, could never quite figure out how to do the whole thing all over again. And so, uh, took 27 years, but, but we figured it out. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm now going to move to my script, and because there are really there are some important things in here that I don't want to forget. So forgive me for, as my wife knows, I usually speak quite ex extemporaneously, but today I'm not going to miss any of this. So um, the housing crisis continues to grow in magnitude, especially for our nation's seniors. More than 25 million Americans, 60 and over, are economically insecure, living at or below 25% of the federal poverty line, according to the Nas National Council of Aging. The number of six people 65 plus experiencing homelessness is expected to triple over the next 10 years. 
the percentage of people 50 and over among the homeless is now 50 percent. Half of everybody homeless today in our country is over 50. Um, which, just to put that in context, in the 90s it was 11 percent of them. In 2003 it was 37 percent of them and now it's over 50 percent of them. And that's according to the American Society on Aging. Um, as, as we all know, adults age 50 and over who are homeless experience multiple bad health conditions, including cognitive and functional impairment, uh, typically 20 or more years sooner than their counterparts. Um, and uh, a statistic I read once not too long ago, uh, the average chronically homeless person dies by age 52. Um, think about that. Um, so, I've already talked to you about the history of the building. Um, fast forward to, say, the last five years or so, uh, we had pretty much given up on trying to find a global, all-encompassing solution, and we had broken it into four pieces, and we were going to kind of do four separate projects over time when the state came up with money for homeless and uh, a program called No Place Like Home at the state HCD level. And so we in the county, uh, Riverside County Department of Behavioral Health, um, went and applied for the first round of that money. And we won in the first round and we not only won, but I think it may have been the biggest project in that round, and it certainly was the first one in Southern California to actually house a person with that kind of money. So, um, the, uh, that, that's part state money, it's part money from HUD uh, in the form of vouchers that are specifically tied to what are 68 permanent supportive housing units, or 30% of the 224 that are here. 68 of them are specifically for individuals who either have been homeless or are at grave risk of becoming homeless, and include wraparound services, because there's a program nationally recognized called Housing First, which, think about this, if you know where someone is, you can go help them. And so housing first is get them, get a roof over their head and then wrap services around them to try and improve their quality of life and help those that can be helped beyond maintenance. And what I mean by that is there are people who have uh, physical and mental health issues that literally from birth to death, those are with them. There are others who, given the right amount of help, can come out the other side and have a much better quality of life. And we run the gamut in what we do with all of those kinds of folks. So, and that includes things like the, you know, food, food distribution, social engagement and interaction, uh, physical and mental health programs, um, uh, particularly Riverside University Health Systems Behavioral Health Department, which uh, we'll talk more later. More people will talk about the building behind me, which didn't exist before this happened. Um, but we've got the supportive housing units, uh, 68 of them. Um, the county has been involved. Uh, we all know that with high quality, attainable cost housing, our communities are always going to be healthier and more prosperous. And so, uh, it, believe me, it takes more than a village to accomplish something like this. And so, I'm going to run down a list of entities. Many of you are part of these entities I'm going to list, but the city of Cathedral City, who is well represented here, uh, that we'll inter uh, Rita will introduce her uh, fellow council members later and some of the staff that's here. Uh, the County of Riverside, 
its housing authority and its uh, behavioral health department, um, housing and community development. Um, Redstone Equity is a lender. Um, CVS is represented by Kelly here who uh, put in the bulk of the tax credit equity for this property. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is here who made our construction <laughs> loan. Uh, the state wears many hats in a project like this because the, with the tax credits they and bonds, they do things at Sacramento that facilitate this kind of property. And um, people often ask me, so I'll tell you in advance, what are the rents? Well, the rents on the studios range from 500 to 750 a month. The rents on the two bedrooms range from 700 to 920. The 68 that are different and special, the resident pays often even less than that $500, um, quite a bit less in some cases. Um, so, you know, the biggest thing we were able to accomplish uh, in addition to a down to the studs and backup renovation of the property was to build this 3,600 square foot community center, which is for our residents. It is for our property management staff, our Hope Through Housing Foundation staff who provide social services. It's also for behavioral health who have offices, full-time staff in here. And so there are, so that's all the institutional side, if you will. Um, I have to take a moment and mention a few people and I want to start with Lucia. Lucia, where are you? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, volume? I'm sorry. Usually people can hear me quite well. <laughs> um, but Lucia is representative of what our organization's all about. She's with Hope Through Housing and this is one of the properties she's responsible for, but this whole thing was done all through COVID. Think about that. We, we had a full building and we had relocation, temporary relocation. We had some, but very minimal permanent relocation, some by choice, um, but, but everything we did was done with COVID type protections and care and storage of people's uh, belongings and and we made it to the other side all through all of that and the community center that the property used to have is over here and it was consisted of one of the units maybe two of the units <laughs> two and it was it's like a postage stamp so we built this, which is 3,600 square feet, and more people will talk about what happens in here, but that was one of the main goals. We took out some units to be able to create this right in the middle of the property. So Lucia, on behalf of Hope Through Housing, who could tell you a pretty much bet the name of every person who lives here, um, it's just an amazing example of what we do because she has taken care of everyone here through this entire process. She and her team on the Hope Through Housing side. Um, I gotta talk about the city for a minute. Uh, I started this with uh, some folks like Greg Pettis uh, who was on the city council, mayor, and I believe was the first actual elected mayor when you started electing mayors, but then passed away suddenly, sadly. Um, uh, George Trapelli, I think, was a city manager back at the time. I worked very closely with a fellow by the name of Warren Bradshaw, who was kind of the housing manager. So we kind of cooked all this up together. and. Um, uh, obviously the council, Tammy Scott at the city, who I understand retired this week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, goosebumps there because Tammy was like the, the center of the storm 
uh, on everything that we were doing at the city. Uh, the city manager, Charlie, is here. And Charlie, I think you know what I mean by that, and the council does. But um, Tammy pointed me to the right people all the time on everything we in construction uh, you know, needed to accomplish. And we all sat down, rolled up our sleeves, and says, what's mandatory, what's discretionary, you know, how can we get this done with the limited resources that we have? So, you know, kudos to everyone at the city uh, for everything they did, which included back at the beginning, they put in some money. Um, along the way, they helped hook us to sewer. Believe it or not, this entire complex was on septic system uh, until some years back. And then here this time around, um, put in more money and did a whole bunch of things to help this actually happen and including all your department heads and their staffs and uh, the county. Uh, the county um, was instrumental in significant amounts of money into this major revitalization of the property. And so, um, you know, <laughs> I see we have, we have Supervisor Perez, he'll be up here in a minute, but uh, Heidi Marshall, um, is here. Uh, she's in charge of all kinds of things at the county. Mike Walsh, Greg Rodriguez, uh, there are a couple other people who aren't here. Juan Garcia, who've been closely involved in this project over the years, and especially in the, the last few years where we've tried to piece together all the stack of capital to get it done. Um, uh, behavioral health. Uh, Dr. Chang couldn't make it today. Marcus Cannon is here. Uh, back when we started working on it this time, um, Matt Chang was down a notch or two in the county hierarchy, <laughs> and so was uh, Marcus, but they have both been elevated. Mark Matt is now the director of behavioral health. Uh, Marcus is the deputy director. He'll be up later to speak. And um, so that's kind of some of the people who've been involved here. Others will mention the uh, construction side, which this was a tough, tough thing to get accomplished through COVID. Just imagine, this was all done through, right through COVID. Uh, we were, what was the, what were we called? A necessary? Yeah. We were that, <laughs> because housing is important, <laughs> believe it or not. And so uh, we, we did it, we did it. And so uh, that's kind of what I wanted to convey because I got involved in this 27 years ago. And we'll go back to the program now, which uh, Supervisor Perez, would you like to come back up and tell us a little bit more about uh, the, the county's perspective on some Thank of you. this. Thank you, Tony. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you, and not to date us, but uh, Tony, uh, when you started this in 1995, I was graduating from UC Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I think I remember you coming to visit me in Sacramento, mm -hmm. maybe even showing me around between 2008 and 2014, and you're right, Greg Pettis and John Aguilar gave me a tour. <clears throat> At the time, I think, uh, Greg, you were working for uh, Congressman Raul Reese back in the day. And then I became the supervisor, and between 2018, 19, 20, we did another tour here, and you, you kept coming in and trying to obviously convey the importance of this project, which I fully understood. There's a lot of great folks that have come through with this project that need to be recognized. First of all, let me just say thank you to our city council, our current city council, our mayor, Rita Lamb. Thank you. Our pro tem, I'm not sure if he's here yet, uh, Mark Carnival, Nancy Ross, Ernesto Gutierrez, Raymond Gregory, thank you for being consistent, persistent, making sure this actually happened. So thank you so much, and the rest of the staff 
for the city of Cathedral City. Obviously, it was already stated out loud by Tony, but National Corps and your entire team, thank you so much for the good work. Uh, Riverside County Behavioral Health, Riverside County Housing and Workforce Solutions, uh, obviously the city, and all of you that played a role one way or another directly or indirectly in making sure that this project finally came uh, to fruition. A few interesting facts. I thought this was interesting. This was built in the 1950s, um, over 60 years ago. We don't know when, in fact, the community was built, but that it was post-World War II and even before Cathedral City became a city. So that dates us quite far. But at the end of the day, with the renovations that we have here, and I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to support the efforts here with a state grant of $7.7 .7 million through the No Place Like Home program uh, that ensured that ultimately we are able to provide housing and behavioral health services alongside ensuring that our senior citizens have somewhere to stay to rest their heads at night. And quite frankly, not too many entities, cities, are willing to do that anymore. It's tough. NIMBYism exists. And I'll tell you, uh, I was talking to uh, Darren when we were coming in this morning. Hey, Cathedral City, I give you props. I mean, that's pretty progressive what you did here. Even though it dates us back, what, 28 years ago? You continued the, the process, you continued the project, and here we are today. So I just want to say thank you for continuing that effort and for being a lead, an example, a model for the rest of the Coachella Valley and for the county of Riverside. So thank you so much. You heard about all the other good stuff already, so I'm going to keep it short. And with that, Tony, won't you come on up, please? Here we go, Tony. On behalf of the County of Riverside, on behalf of my staff, I want to say thank you for this effort. Good job. <laughs> well overdue. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, you Supervisor. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. We'll keep it short. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mayor Rita Lamb is here, and she has a few words she'd like to share with us. Well, thank you all for being here today for the reopening of Cathedral Palms Senior Community. Um, I, uh, this is a great moment for our city, um, and it'll be a key asset as we combat homelessness. Uh, I, I certainly want to uh, extend my thanks to my fellow council people as we um, really embrace this fantastic development. Um, I don't know that, I, I don't see uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mark Carnavale, but he was instrumental in supporting us in this, and I want to thank and recognize my fellow council people. Uh, Councilman Nancy Ross, Ernesto Gutierrez, and Raymond Gregory, and our wonderful city staff. I, we have, I see Charlie McClendon here as our city manager, and Stone James, our director of economic development, was here. There he is. All right. And uh, Ryan Hunt, who's our director of communications, who prepared for me this wonderful script that I'm not looking at. So, uh, uh oh, I'll get a bad. I'm a retired school principal, so if I get a bad grade when I get home tonight. You don't know why. It's, it's Ryan and me. Um, but I wanted to. I wanted to um, say that on January 28th. Um, which was a Saturday at the beginning of this year, our city council and our city staff and community members all got together for a strategic planning session that lasted all day. And part of it was um, an accumulation of reading the uh, feedback from community members who talked about what their big issue was for the city. And they talked about homelessness. Um, and they wanted resolutions to it. I mean, we look at this, this is majestic. And 
um, I had the great good fortune when I was just newly elected to council that Tony gave me a personal tour of the site and it was before they started construction and then um, he took me through again as they were doing construction during COVID. Um, uh, you know, I liken it to, and I was chatting this morning, um, it's like being an air traffic controller and all the planes in the air. Between the money and the property and COVID and construction, uh, and I got to meet the uh, you know, general contractor for this, it was it was overwhelming. Um, as a resident, a long-term resident of Cathedral City, I you know I would just drive by. I I didn't know, I didn't know all the intricacies that go into a project like this. So I am uh, thrilled to death um, to be to be able to represent Cathedral City now and to represent this wonderful project. Um, I, I'm going to go back to my script because there are some things I want to say too and not miss. Um, as many of you know, a huge part of that effort with homelessness is ongoing with the Cathedral City Police Department's Homeless Liaison Team. And their efforts are, are, are focused on providing assistance and resources to those members in need. Uh, the team has received specialized training and enjoy working with all the stakeholders in Cathedral City to find long-term solutions. The reopening of Cathedral Palm Senior Apartments is a prime example. These renovated, affordable apartments will significantly reduce the burden for low-income and unhoused seniors, and we're grateful for the continued commitment to this issue by our partners at National Corps and the County of Riverside. And I think we ought to give them applause. Yay! As a school principal, we call this jazz hands. And when I was, but by the end of the day, when I was getting a little frazzled, we do clam claps. And so we couldn't take all the noise. So, so anyway, excuse my little foray into my past life. Cathedral Palms is now home to more than 200 seniors, and the new community features a modern 3,600 square foot building that's been talked about. I was in there. It is unbelievable. Riverside County Uni uh, University Health System's Behavioral Health Department will also offer supportive services focused on mental health and substance abuse services, working with previously homeless residents to maintain stable housing. The shared vision of National Corps, the County of Riverside, the City of Cathedral City, and our partners has been inspiring to watch and be part of and the culmination of this partnership. It's truly special. Thank you again, National Corps, the County of Riverside, and everyone here for including me in today's ceremony. The work related to this issue is never finished, but this is a huge step forward, and this is my favorite line, prepositional phrase, in the right direction. So in the right direction is where we want to go. Thank you. You're beyond wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you, everybody at Cathedral City. <clears throat> okay, well, on January 28th, Annabelle and I were in Antarctica celebrating my 72nd birthday. And so I, I wish I could have been with you, Rita, but we had other plans. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the importance of the homelessness issue cannot be overstated. Uh, it has to be solved throughout our entire nation. Hundreds of thousands of people do not have a place to sleep at night. It's just, I mean, we, we, especially this group of folks here knows and understands what I'm talking about. So we, we have to keep chipping away at it. We have to find new and creative ways. Um, our organization uh, is, is a little unique in the, in the nonprofit housing world. We, we basically build everything that we do. Uh, our construction department, Chris Killian is in the back. He's in charge of our construction. And <laughs> Carol, Carol's standing beside him. She was the project manager in charge of this. Um, Chris, how many construction projects, new or rehab, do you have underway today? Today we have 13 with a total of over, it's 1,330 apartments that are under construction. Wow. Today, all at the same time. That's really unheard of in the nonprofit world, truly. I, I mean, Kelly, you, you roam the country doing this. Is there anybody else doing that? 
Okay, I don't think so. We haven't come across them yet. Okay, but it, it's so important because we know what all the pieces are and fitting all these pieces together is such a challenge. We have an architect here with us today who worked on this, but he's working on lots of, with Onyx, he's working on lots of our projects. He can start a sentence and we can finish it. That's how important that kind of cooperation is. So uh, the behavioral health aspect of this, the 68 units in particular, um, Matt Chang and Marcus and I and a couple other people got together brainstorming how we could incorporate that into the redoing of this property. And so I would like uh, Marcus Cannon from Riverside University Health System Behavioral Health, the Deputy Director, to come up and tell us a little bit about how that all works. Thank you, Tony. Um, as Tony said, my name is Marcus Cannon. I'm one of the deputy directors with Riverside University Health System Behavioral Health. Uh, and I'm grateful to be here today. As I was driving in, I was just uh, struck, uh, overwhelmed, I think is the word, about how excited I am to be part of this project. I, I would love to use jazz hands, um, <laughs> but I have a very serious boss, and I think if she heard that I did, she would give me some clam claps. <laughs> um, but, but truly, I think that's the natural response, right? When, when we're excited about something, it's, it's to say thank you. And so thank you to the city uh, for your investment. Thank you to the financial partners that have invested. Thank you to the county supervisor's office. Um, specifically on behavioral health, our director, uh, Dr. Matthew Chang, can't attend today, and he asked me to send his apologies for that. But this is a project that we're really proud of. We're proud to be part of uh, making a healthier cathedral city. Our UHS is an integrated department. We provide the county's medical center, the county's behavioral health department, 13 community health clinics, as well as the county's public health department. And so our mission is to provide what we call whole person care, to not just treat one aspect of someone's health needs, but to treat the whole person. Um, that, that's really our mission, that's why we get out of bed every day. One of the hardest parts about that though is that if people don't have a place to live, it's really hard for them to get healthy and it's hard for us to provide good care. And so having a project like this that provides housing for so many is absolutely in, indispensable. It's vital to be able to do that. And that's why again we just I'm excited that, that the investment partners, that the city is here to see what your investment turns into, uh, to see that people have a quality place to live, and then that provides a launching pad for us to provide healthcare services. Um, I'm really grateful to our team. Uh, Alexis Erkman is here in the back. She's our behavioral health services supervisor that oversees the behavioral health services here. as well as Mark Schumacher is one of our behavioral health specialists on site and he is a partner. Uh, Kevin Cameron, who couldn't be here today. Uh, these gentlemen have persevered as the construction project went along. Uh, they were not initially in this beautiful building. There was a time when they were in a trailer. Uh, the air conditioning in that trailer would often work, uh, but not always. I think there was a time where the heat swelled the door shut and the gentlemen were trapped inside. Um, and, and, and so I want to thank them, first of all, for their perseverance, but also to us that's really a reminder of, hey, for, for one day or for a period of months, conditions were uncomfortable, but the people that we serve, if they don't have housing, that's all day every day. And so that's... Uh, again, why this mission is, is so important. We're really proud of the investment. There's two full-time on-site behavioral health staff, uh, but that's not the end of the investment. Uh, they're supported by their supervisor. Our administrative team also has helped uh, National Corps with some of the administrative reporting uh, that's required to HCD. And so I think we all know the saying, many hands make light work. I would challenge that that's not always true. Sometimes it takes many hands just to get the work done, uh, yeah. and it's still not light. <laughs> um, certainly, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our county's Housing and Workforce Solutions Department. 
an important part of the financing for this project is the Section 8 vouchers that go into underwriting uh, the cost of these units. And I think if anybody has paid attention, you'll know that our surrounding counties um, have not had the same success. Uh, and so we're just grateful to uh, the Department of um, Housing and Urban Development and their investment in, in Section 8 vouchers, but also to our local uh, department's stewardship of that relationship and of those vouchers to do more with them than, than certainly other counties have been able to do. So I think uh, that that's really what our director would want me to say is just thank you to the partners. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to serve residents here. Uh, part of our mission is stigma reduction. Chronic health conditions are common. Uh, if you look around our society, right, many of us suffer from diabetes or high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. Mental health conditions are another form of chronic condition, and oftentimes in society there's this sense of, oh, someone with a mental health condition is, is other than us. That's not me, or that's not my family. But I think if we're honest, many of us know that is us. Um, I may have a mental health condition, you may have a mental health condition, surely someone in our family does. And so to destigmatize that and to say, this is a part of being human, is having ups and downs, uh, in our lives and if we have a platform here where we can provide housing for people and then provide health care to serve the whole person that's something we're extremely proud of and extremely grateful to be part of and so again thank you mayor lamb thank you to the city thank you to the partners thank you to national core and and hope through housing and housing workforce solutions and supervisor uh, perez uh, we appreciate the partnership and we appreciate the opportunity to be part of this uh, amazing development thank you Thank you, Marcus. All right, um, on behalf of both Redstone and uh, an entity which you're gonna hear about in a moment, we have Kelly Savage. Uh, and Kelly came all the way from Connecticut, okay? She may win the award for traveling the <laughs> furthest. But Kelly and I met last summer in Austin, Texas. She was there for a conference on a panel. <laughs> I went up and introduced myself and we started chatting and through the conversation realized that her company had invested a significant amount of the tax credit equity into this project. And so uh, she is here and she will tell you more about how all that works. Okay, Kelly, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, it's great to be here. I'm super excited. I don't always travel from the East Coast to the West Coast, but this was one I couldn't miss. And I mean, again, I get very emotional on all of these. I'm very passionate about what I do, and I'm very lucky to have the job that I have. So um, for those of you who don't know, CVS Health acquired Aetna at the end of 2018. Aetna had always invested in affordable housing, uh, but we didn't do it with any sort of intention or strategy. So right when the companies were coming together, you know, we all understand that, and we've heard it a million times today already, that housing is health. I mean, you can't do anything about your health unless you have a safe, affordable roof over your head. And so um, you know, that's what we decided. We really needed to have that foundation in order to set people on a better path towards um, you know, improving their health and well-being. And so, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how do I grow the program? Who do I partner with? What do I do? And uh, Redstone Equity Partners um, have always been a great group, but when they showed us this particular opportunity, we, we looked at what was going on here, and we looked at the passionate partners, and we said, we, we have to be a part of this, right? Um, you know, in the state of California, we've invested over the years over $250 million, um, about $70 million of it in the past couple of years. So, again, been really intentional. Um, basically, um, we invest um, and get to know other developers and all the partners and the cities and the counties um, because we don't just make that investment. We're sort of a partner for life. Once, <laughs> once we do it, you're, you know, you're stuck with us. So we have our colleagues that will come out and we try and connect our programs and services to support the residents. So you have um, you know, the, the wraparound services, but what we like to do is try and come in and fill in any types of gaps that we see in terms of uh, maybe transportation or food insecurity and some other things. 
And we do this across um, here for the residents and hopefully across your greater portfolio. Um, so we couldn't be more excited to be here. Um, we have a couple of colleagues that have come out and support. We have a table inside. Um, there's a couple of baskets that we're raffling off for the residents. Um, so hopefully the residents can, can come inside after and put their name in for that raffle and that would be wonderful. I'm gonna keep it very short, but I'm just so proud to be here representing Aetna and CBS Health. And I look forward to um, more things to come, maybe uh, doing some things on the 13 projects that you have going on. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly, so very much. Oh, boy. Um, every time I stand and sit, I get these goosebumps up and down my... Uh, Okay, uh, it, it, and, and Redstone, Redstone has been doing this where they gather investors, it's called syndication. And you know, some investors like to do it all, some investors like to spread their risk a little more and syndicators provide that crucially important function to essentially be the people between the investors in the upper tier and we, the developers and operators who are using that money to build these kinds of projects. So, uh, but while before some of that money comes in, we have to do the project. And to do that, one of the biggest pieces is a construction loan. And Rosalind Ross is here, and she's going to tell you what they do in affordable housing. Come on up, Russell. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so JP Morgan Chase is thrilled to be here today. I know we want to talk about financing, but not. We just want to celebrate being here at this grand reopening of this beautiful property of Cathedral Palms and the dedicated team of National Corps through a collaborative um, and collective effort here today with many of you, with the city, with the county leadership, uh, with the state leadership as well, we are turning this vision of bringing back or, 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 and, and, and keeping um, 224 homes to serve our seniors in this vibrant and picturesque community. When I was driving in to see the mountains, I'm like, people walk, you know, wake up to this every day? That is amazing. So I am so excited and happy that as our senior population are able to wake up to such a beautiful um, and vibrant community. So I just want to congratulate our National Corps team. I know you guys worked hard, as you said, through COVID and through um, trying to um, bring this property back to um, bring this property back as well as rebuild and build a new community center. So I want to you know, congratulate you guys for that and, and your dedication, as well as the Housing for Hope Foundation. I know you guys are providing the services along with CBS and with Riverside, um, Riverside Uni University. Did I get that right? Uni Riverside University Services, Behavioral Services. Um, we're excited to the keep, continue this collaboration and just be a part of this important milestone with you and all your families who will live and thrive in this community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rosalind. Some years after we started the company, uh, but always with a very clear plan, uh, we created a separate entity called the Hope Through Housing Foundation. And I'm going to invite Greg Bradbart up. He is uh, he wears a couple hats around here, uh, but he's the president of Hope Through Housing Foundation, and he's a senior VP of National Corps. I believe that's correct. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. It's an exciting day, isn't it? Yes. So I'm going to share. You know, Tony shared a lot of the history. My more recent history is I joined National Corps in 2017. And I remember I did a tour around kind of, you know, most of our properties or pretty much all of them. And I'll tell you, one of the things you'll find is National Corps really prides itself in well-maintained, well-managed, safe, stable housing for our residents. And there were really just two or three properties that I drove up to and I went, this one could use a little love. And I'll tell you, this was one of those properties. And I remember literally, I drove my car into it. It was either that parking spot or right there. And looked at the buildings and thought, 
This one needs a little love. I found it certainly after that. Tony had already been working on that. Like you said, it took a number of years to get to this point. But I can tell you what a huge improvement this is for this um, property. Not only the additional units, the rehabs, but this building here, Tony alluded to. The former community space that we had was those two units, and there was a ramp in between them. And it just wasn't conducive to us providing quality resident services here on the property. So um, I want to just give huge kudos to Tony. You can see this is a labor of love for him. Can we just give Tony Meiser a applause? <laughs> but really, this place is about more than bricks and mortar. You know, our mission, our shared mission as National Corps and the Hope Their Housing Foundation is to use affordable housing as a platform to elevate the health, the well-being, and the self-sufficiency of our residents. And that's our goal is providing quality um, uh, housing, but also the services and the caring people who can come alongside our residents to help them stay healthy, independent, and meet their goals um, as well. So this is a really exciting place um, in that regard. And we know that we couldn't do that without um, the entire service team um, here. So I um, want to thank, um, uh, again, Lucia, um, who's on the team. Um, also, AJ and Vanessa as well, for their help on the PSH side. Um, our partners at Riverside University Health System um, as well. Um, but this building, hopefully you'll get to see it, um, in this community space um, is not only where we can do community events, and um, I was out here at Thanksgiving and got to see all of our residents together, celebrating um, together, um, but we also have offices here for the behavioral health services, um, for individual meetings, but our goal is to make sure that we're meeting the needs um, of our residents, and particularly with the focus on health and wellness um, in this place. Some of the things that Lucia um, and the team provide here on the Hope Their Housing side um, is connecting our residents with any resources they need, personal, medical, financial needs, um, offering community activities, um, food distributions we do on a regular basis, um, educational classes, um, we have financial counseling and education that's available as well. That can include employment, that include money management, connecting with emergency assistance um, as well when that's needed, um, and even things to come, I believe um, we're working on some art therapy um, in the future as well. Um, but know that for many, many years, um, this place um, will be a blessing to the residents that live here. And with that, can I recognize all of the residents who are with us? If you're a resident, can you either wave or stand? Can you do that? <laughs> this, place, um, this place is about you at the end of the day. That's why we're all here celebrating, um, and we uh, hope and our intention is that this is a place that supports you and where you enjoy living for many, many years, uh, and just know that that's the intent of everyone here. So we are all here to celebrate um, all of you, um, our residents, so thank you for joining us um, this morning. So um, I think a couple other thank yous uh, really quickly. Um, one of the things you'll notice um, on the rooftops here um, is solar around here, and we have a number of partners there. I don't know if Tim got a shout out, um, but Tim Kohut, who um, heads up all of our sustainability, does incredible work for us. And Michelle Thomas from Edison, want to give a shout out to as well. I understand that Michelle put a lot of work in helping this all come about um, as well. And then property management. Can the property management team all wave? These are the folks who run this place every day um, and know that this place could not be what it is without all of your hard work every single day. So thank you to all of you. And I know there's many others here who we're probably forgetting, um, but thank you for everybody who's made this come about. Everybody good? All right, next shot, ribbon. No, 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 that in front. I'm sure. Let's get it here. Grab the scissors with me. And we'll give this a go. Ready? Yep. Yeah.